I, I have a question though, yeah. Brett. What yeah, does an sure. assistant video editor do? <laughs> I mean, I think it was just the same thing as a video editor. They just didn't pay him as much. Oh, oh, it was just <laughs> video editor yeah. slash we're going to pay you less. <laughs> Wow, we would have never believed this. We're on Spotify, we're on Apple, we're on Google. Go out there and listen to us. So we're excited about it. We're glad you're excited about it too. Hey everyone, welcome to Lunch Break. So glad to have you here. I'm here with uh, Tom as we usual. We are. This is the first time you would have been, I've been on set for a while. Is it? Together? It is. Yeah. So <laughs> we, I, we've both been so busy that yeah. we, you know, so, it, hey. we're running. Yeah, so we'll be we'll be prodding each other a lot. Today. <laughs> hopefully, mm -hmm. hopefully, and and uh, we have my new friend uh, Brett Huckins here yeah. with us, and excited to talk. Oh, him. he's got a great, exciting life. We, yeah, yeah, we share church together. He's oh, still, you you guys both worked at a mega church. Uh, he's out. I'll be out in eleven months, but I'll be retiring, not wow. resigning. So, <laughs> <laughs> wow, yeah, I'm yeah. so excited to get going and uh, get some uh, uh, wisdom from him. We, yeah, absolutely. So, uh, Brett, we know that you recently, um, uh, and I, I, I can't remember exactly how recently, but semi-recently, uh, left full-time ministry employment to work in full-time marketplace employment. And that doesn't mean that you're not doing ministry because what you do is absolutely ministry mm -hmm. and stuff that we discuss. But um, mm -hmm. <clears throat> I want to talk about that and, you know, um, the transition, how that went, um, how it's going now, you know, where, where you're at in business. So, um, for, for those of you watching, uh, Brent, uh, Brett uh, is a partner in a business called iconic. Is that right? Iconic. Um, yeah, that, correct. um, for, for those in the industry, myself and Alex, uh, Tom, um, he, they run a, uh, SAS based software as a service, uh, OTT platform and a CDN. So uh, I'm going to let Brett kind of break that down in layman's terms. You just that nerded means, out. I you, did. I did. Don't turn us off now. <laughs> but but that, that's very, something very, very specific. Very impressive. Very yeah, impressive. I, know. I like that, though. I like that. So, yeah. Yeah. Give us that long and short part of that, Brett. Yeah, for sure. So uh, what we do is we provide uh, back-end uh, content management uh, and hosting for content owners that have large catalogs of libraries of video content. Uh, and then uh, we provide, uh, you know, tagging and organization of all that content. And then we uh, get you into di distribution as well. So on mobile, uh, uh, web, and then uh, really OTT, which is uh, TV applications. So your, you know, uh, uh, your Apple TV, your Roku, your Fire, and LG, Samsung, just all the different TV applications. So, uh, so yeah, so that's kind of it in a nutshell. Is from the from the back end to the distribution side of things. Yeah, and and to to make it kind of analogy that people would understand, imagine like a Netflix or Hulu or any of the other apps, and you know some of them are smaller, or whatever. Um, Brett provides an app that you can use to create that kind of service. Yeah, and so yeah, that's a good way to describe it. It's people who want to have their own, you know, private version of a Netflix experience for their mm -hmm. customers, and so that could be, you know, it could be fitness brands, it could be, you know, uh, news media, it could be any, you know, anyone with just a large library of content that wants to uh, distribute it and then monetize that content, you know, either via ads or paid subscriptions, you know, or a combination. Like yeah, exactly. So, yeah, so, so, Brett, yeah. this is not where you um, started. Kind of, kind of rewind us and uh, yeah. give us the uh, the journey coming up. But uh, there again, I'm going to ask for infamous questions. Is there anything about you that uh, maybe um, uh, a lot of people don't know, and you know, you know, don't uh, cause a fight between you and your wife? Or <laughs> <laughs> now that's interesting because I think some people who know me best might know this, but. It, it probably does cause fights between my, me and my wife now that you said that. Um, I think one thing random about me is uh, I like all of the weird um, uh, little known or little played sports. It's like, ran I mean, it, you might not even say there's probably wouldn't even call them sports, but like things like uh, pool and ping pong and mm -hmm. bowling and rock climbing and, you know, just random like like a disc golf and frisbee ultimate frisbee things mm -hmm. like that that are all just kind of random and my wife is like 
you try to be good at all the sports that no one cares about. <laughs> I'm like, that. it's fun. And so, and then the other pet peeve of hers is that when, uh, when I want to, when I try something for the first time, I'm like, oh, this was awesome. Uh, then I have to go out and buy all of the accessories and gear for it. It's like, all the gear. You know, she, she, yeah. She's like, you're not going pro. Why do you need like the, you know, all the things you've done at one time. And so, uh, you know, that's my thing. I, I really, uh, in college, I, uh, played a lot of pool just in my spare time like in between classes there was a pool table and i would just like every you know between classes go there and just play by myself and just kind of uh i think it was therapeutic just to wind down and focus on you know strategy and like refine angles and all that and just i'm kind of a nerd like that too so so did you pick up pickleball <clears throat> so i played for the first time which that yeah that would be right in line Played for the first time maybe a couple a couple of months ago and loved it. And I didn't though go out and buy all the stuff, but uh, but I was playing it and I was telling my wife like I'm going to be the greatest pickleball player ever. Like this is amazing. Well, Brett, I'm going to so, tell you yes. they do have professional leagues in pickleball. Okay, they do. Yeah, I I think I've seen some uh, the clips online. And I'm like, okay, there's this this pretty serious. Yeah, they're tearing most tennis courts out and putting in pickleball. Really? Courts. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they are yeah. doing that quite frequently now. My daughter, mm -hmm. oldest daughter, is a tennis pro, and um, so there's yeah. Hey, you have to have um, uh, you have to be certified in training pickleball, and it's just a three year old, four year old sport. Yeah, so it's, it's crazy. Hey, it started right before the pandemic. So yeah, I love wow. it. I love the fact that you're you. You know, I always tell people I'm a um, nerd on the inside and a jock on the outside. <laughs> and uh, my uh, academia is computer science. I've got a computer science degree. Oh, wow. So when yeah. you're talking IT and stuff, m m m my insides were happy. <laughs> <laughs> What's funny is I started um, my college career thinking I was going to do computer science. I didn't really know what it was, but I always liked computers. I would build them when I was a kid. And um, I took my first like programming class and kind of just bombed the test. And I, I don't know what I expected, but I did not expect like logic. I don't know. Yeah. And, uh, and I was like, yeah, I don't know that I'm going to do this and switch major, switch majors. And but I still like found a career in tech, but it was just not through programming. I love it though. A little bit different tech. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. So, so let's, let's, let's rewind to the earlier days. How did, yeah. how did we end up here as a, as a business owner, partner, tech industry, all of those things, which you're doing amazing things and I love it. So, mm -hmm. Well, thank you. I so my my dad was an entrepreneur growing up. So I like I, when I was going back to college, I majored in um, after switching from uh, computer science. I majored in finance, and because it was, I thought it would be the backbone of business, and that I would just I would do my own business one day. That's all I kind of was ever modeled for me, um, and so that's what I did. And then uh, after I graduated. Uh, this, I should have used this for my little funny note or my little known story. Uh, <laughs> after I graduated from college, I started a shaved ice snow cone business. Uh -huh, uh, and it, down in Texas, that's a thing on every corner, there's shaved ice and snow cones. And so uh, I started that and then did that for a summer. And then I bought one that had been around for uh, 20 years. And so I, it, was, it was an established business that I ended up buying. Um, and then I ran that three years uh, until I uh, sold it and went to work for the church. But uh, but I always thought I was going to do business. And the only reason why I, um, uh, the only reason why I actually ended up going to work for the church originally was because I needed a job because I met my future wife and her dad was uh, the executive senior pastor at the church. Oh, and wow. it was like, that's that's great. Mm -hmm. So I love that, you know, you think you want to marry my daughter, but. Is that going to be on snow cones? Uh, <laughs> snow cone, uh, snow cone like empire is going to, <laughs> yeah, snow cone empire is going to provide for my daughter. So <laughs> was that the name uh, of the like, snow cone empire? <laughs> no, uh, I just you know like I was going to build, I was going to build oh, yeah. a snow cone empire that was going to take over the world. But um, but yeah, so I ended up you know started thinking about what I wanted to do. And it was funny. I it's kind of the two things that popped in my head was like, you know, I want to actually work either corporate for Apple computers because I love, I loved computers and I love Apple, or uh, Gateway Church. Like that's where I was attending the ch uh, church at the time, and I was actually playing um, bass, uh, bass guitar for their worship team, mm -hmm. and uh, and I was like, maybe I'll go try to see if they, you know, need any if there's any open, open positions in the worship department. 
Um, and uh, it turns out uh, there weren't, but there was a position opening for a video, uh, an assistant video editor position. Uh, and I had never <laughs> edited video in my life, but I'm like, you know what? I can learn. I can um, do that. I, I have a question though, and, right? What yeah, does an sure. assistant video editor do? I mean, I think it was just the same thing as a video editor. They didn't pay him as much. Oh, oh, it was just video editor <laughs> yeah. slash we're going to pay you less. I, I yeah, it wasn't, as, it wasn't an assistant. Answer. It wasn't, yeah, it wasn't assistant to the video editor. Yeah, yeah. That's where I was going. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, I was going there. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. So that was kind of my first thing. And I learned, I mean, I think they, uh, the guy that hired me saw something in me and, um, and, and basically said, Hey, you're going to start in two weeks. Uh, in that time, here's a login to go learn everything there is to know about final cut, uh, pro. <laughs> uh, and so I just, uh, consumed, consumed every training video and everything I could and uh, hit the ground running when I started. Uh, did you feel prepared later, when was, you started? I mean, I, felt like I was prepared as I could be because I really I tried to watch everything I could, but terrified that I know I knew I knew I didn't actually know what I was doing, and uh -huh. so it would actually take getting in there and working with real footage and all that. But as far as the theory, how the program worked, and all that, I was like, I I know all of this, but there's nothing like getting in there and trying and doing it yourself. So <laughs> uh, it was. It was, it was, yeah, it was fun. Um, he actually hired me because I had an audio, uh, an audio background. I had um, done some engineering and recording and learned new pro tools. I had just um, lived in LA for a year where I was like recording demos and all of that. And so the actual, I think that was the only reason why I got the job is because he needed a video editor with audio experience or it was like, he was trying to find someone with audio experience. I'm like, well, I got one of, one of the two. Uh, I can I can I do that and then learn the other and so that was kind of uh, how I got you know the, my foot in the door there but so, so uh, but yeah me, I did that for oh yeah let me pull a string here I'm interested so how did you get from L A back to Texas because you said you were in L A for a year no, about a year about a year yeah what took you so you were in Texas and you came out to L A beautiful sunny Cal you know um, so <laughs> yep. So what took you out here? Yeah. So yeah. So I grew up. I was you know born and raised in Texas, and um, but I had a friend who became became pretty close with a famous uh, pop star singer, and so when they came to town, uh, they were talking about, hey, do you want to move out here and form a band and write music, record, and then open up for us, go on the road and open up for us, and I thought, you know, my I'm 20, maybe three or four at that time. And play I'm like, bass? yeah, might as well. <laughs> yeah. Play bass and write music and record and try to do the whole, you know, try to do the music career. And, and I, I just felt like if I didn't do it then I probably would regret like wonder, Hey, should it, you know, what mm -hmm. could have been. And so just kind of bit the bullet and jumped out there with a couple friends of mine. And so three of us, uh, <laughs> three of us shared an apartment in West Hollywood yeah, that's and, usually uh, where the story just, goes. I shared an apartment with five guys, so. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> the important yeah. part was not to be home at the same time. <laughs> exactly, yeah. And uh, and with one, we had one little window AC in it. And it just was, <laughs> I just remember being the hot, hot days in that apartment. Uh, so what um, was the famous famous group that you were related to or connected to? Uh, Kelly Clarkson. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I've, heard, I've, heard, I've heard of her. Well, because she's from Burleson, and so she was coming back. Burleson is in Texas and Fort Worth, and so when she she was coming back um, to play a hometown uh, show, and so uh, my friend was singing background vocals for her, and said, "Hey, come hang out with us." So we spent a weekend, and we just hung out with her, and had you know got to be friends and all that. And she invited us out to, uh, "Hey, y'all should be, move to L.A." and right and just hey, come on the road with us so that was about you know about nine or ten months of working a part-time job at a pr agency to pay the bills and then the rest of the time trying to record and write and record and that's how i learned really how to mix an engineer on a, on a small scale obviously mm -hmm. just doing demos in, the, in an apartment but learn pro tools and uh 
Um, but then, you know, as one does, uh, kind of gets tired of LA and yeah, the, uh, pretty quick. <laughs> the, the, tra- the traffic, um, I spent you know, a week in there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, 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 the people, uh, you know, uh, there's just, it's just different when, you know, I wasn't in the Bible belt South anymore. So right. it just, <laughs> it just are, gets, are there churches you know, in I, LA I missed all. Or... <laughs> yeah. It's Dorothy's tough. Not like, in Kansas. I, yeah, it's tough. And so, you know, and I and I was already pretty plugged into Gateway. And so especially finding real friends and community at Gateway and then leaving like a couple, you know, a year or two later mm-hmm. uh, to for that, it was that was a real, uh, a real juxtaposition for me to, wow, one of these things is not like the other. And so <laughs> ended up coming back home. And, um, and that's when I started uh, when I got the job at Gateway. Originally. I love that. So so your father in law, is he still at Gateway? So, uh, so my father-in-law, his name is Tom Lane and he, um, he came on probably in the early first two or three years of the church. Uh, and so did my brother-in-law, Todd Lane. Uh, and they, Todd actually was before Tom and Todd was the first business uh, administrator. And then Tom was the senior executive, senior pastor for, um, man, I think to the, to 2016 and then Todd Lane took over for him. And so Tom stayed on, stayed on board. Todd, um, Todd was on staff and was the executive senior pastor through the last um, seven years. Um, it was fun because I actually ended up getting to report to my brother-in-law for the last, uh, year or two. And that was really, that was really awesome. Uh, but they were, they were on staff all that time. And we've all recently actually in just one way or other have transitioned. Um, I was first about four months ago and then, uh, Tom and Todd have tr- transitioned as well. And they, they're, um, going to be doing their own kind of consulting, helping other churches, um, just, uh, they have an executive leadership institute that Tom is uh, that Tom founded, and they're helping pastors and leaders, business leaders and pastors, uh, with kind of heart leadership things. Um, so I'm really excited for what they're doing. But it was really cool to get to spend 17 years at a church at a place that I really you know love. Pastor Robert, I respect Pastor Robert so much. He's an incredible teacher, a man of God. And then with my family, getting to do ministry with my uh, father-in-law and brother-in-law, it was just it was it was incredible. And, and you said they're transitioning into the sun now taking over. So, yeah. So Pastor Robert has, is, is in a, is in a three, two to three year transition with um, his youngest son, um, Pastor James Morris. And so yeah, they're in a transition. They've announced that to the congregation uh, and they're in that process right now. And so, yeah, it's just all new kind of uh, passing, passing of the torch and, kind of a new legacy that's going to be carried on through Pastor James. Um, So, yeah, there's exciting, exciting things there for Gateway right now, too. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. You you wouldn't believe how similar um, your story is. Yeah. (laughs) And that's why I pulled on that string, because I was like, oh, Tom can relate to this. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. I love it. Well, well, our our pastor is doing this, and uh, I've been there 30 years, so I'm retiring next year. And uh, wow. so, so I've been there. I, I was the executive pastor for the last 30 years. Oh, wow. <laughs> and I, and That's I just, amazing. And I just stepped back uh, just far enough to keep a kind of a uh, my head over the fence a little <laughs> bit to watch yeah. the younger guys. And they're doing a terrific job. So yeah. it, it, That's it, awesome. you have to. This is something that has to happen. So, yeah. Yeah. So is, is that where you met your business partner now? Yeah, so um, he, he actually he um, so he started his company like 14 years ago, but he actually has served Gateway as a client for the last 10 years. So Gateway has been a customer uh, for the last 10 years that he's you know he's served and developed, and really he developed this uh, platform because seeing in the market there the other the other platforms that were there were just not cutting it and especially for the needs of like a gateway a, a large uh you know they, there's a lot of content a lot of media that gateway has and so the so the current provider so he started out as a, just a reseller and integrator of other people's solutions and realized that there just wasn't anything it wasn't cutting it for the needs the demands of a of a organization like gateway and other large media and entertainment customers and so about four years ago is when he started developing his own product. So yeah, I met him through a gateway where, you know, we go back through gateway uh, ties. And, and so I've seen him as a vendor, me being on the customer side for so many years and appreciating uh, what 
he and his company did for Gateway to serve Gateway so well all those years. And, um, and so when I started feeling transition, and I didn't speak to that, but the transition of just me feeling like, okay, God, I know that you, uh, I know that you called me to business uh, a long time ago, but I, ne- so I never thought, I never would have thought I would have been at Gateway almost 17 years. I, I really thought I was getting a job for a couple of years so that I could marry my wife and then I could figure <laughs> out what I was really going to, what I was really going to do. Um, I just didn't, I, you know, I didn't ever think I'd be there that long, but as I was there, and as I gained um, influence and as I gained leadership and, you know, they asked me to oversee more and more teams and people, uh, I realized that there's, there's an itch that was getting scratched by like, man, I'm actually getting to lead and I'm getting to run. I'm getting I'm, I'm empowered to lead these great areas and to create great things for the kingdom. And my this is great. I don't need to go. I don't need to go do business. Um, but there was something that in the back of my heart and back of my mind, I really felt like that at some point God, that God placed things in me that I haven't really got to do yet. And so started stirring that greater at the end of last year. Um, and that's when, you know, that's when the transition started playing. So as I was, as I began praying about it, um, I, the Lord led me to go talk to uh, Matt, my business partner and just said, Hey, um, would you pray with this with me? But like, we've, we've been friends through business through the years. And, um, I think there could be something here. What do you think? And he agreed. And so, yeah, we started this journey together and he, and you know, he's, he's been a, been a smaller, op- smaller operation, uh, as far as the, uh, in the, in the, in the States, the presence, he has, a, there's big teams in Europe that are distributed that do the, that uh, manage to maintain the product. But uh, as far as in here, it's been a smaller team. And so it's been, it's been new to take on a partner and someone to kind of co-labor with. And, but it's been, it's been great. It's just been a whole, it's, it's been new for both of us for sure. So how, how did, how does that go from um, like being a client to being, Hey, you know, why don't you come on as a business partner? That's like, <clears throat> as a business owner myself, it's, not often that you ask someone to come on board as a business partner. There's got to be some real strategic alliance or, or something yeah. real serious that you bring to the table for that to be a possibility. Yeah. So what I didn't say is that we've known each other for um, for all those 17 years. So Matt was the guy that hired me at Gateway. Okay. <laughs> he's the one that took he's the one that took a chance on me 17 years ago. This guy that didn't know how to edit video. So we really have. Both of us, he's gotten to see me and my career and journey through Gateway and my leadership development. And I've got to see him and the good, bad, and the ugly of owning a business and how, you know, just just all the ups and downs of that. And I've seen his character uh, tested and I've seen, I've seen his true colors and he's seen mine uh, from that, you know, we were friends and then it became... Uh, you know, and I and I'm not the one that actually hired him as a client at Gateway. It was done through a different department, and that was 10 years ago. So I wasn't in the position even to do that. Mm-hmm. But it was brought in through this. It was brought in through a different department, and then uh, it, eventually I ended up stewarding that relationship uh, with you know uh, with with Matt and Iconic. And um, but yeah, so it's like we've we've and I think for him. He appreciated. He's seen my growth. He saw kind of how I treated my teams and my and my the departments and the people under my purview. And we have very similar um, uh, views on leadership and views on people and how people are the most important thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, that business is second, and people are, are are why we're in business is to help people. Uh, and and you know we talk about it kind of a whole our whole life, like an integrated life between business and, and our, and our personal lives. And that nothing is more important than our families and our personal lives. And then we treat that where we, we carry that to our employees as well. And so he saw like, that's how I led. And so I think it was natural when I came to him and said, Hey, what do you think about this? Is this, and, it, and is, it, is it time to do something together? Uh, he was like, yeah, let's sign me up. Let's go. And so it, we had that history of, there was a friendship, but also a mutual respect for, kind of what each other has done in our respective careers. Hmm. Well, I, I, I know our theme for um, Ministry Matters. So that's <laughs> our next show. I, my, my head's spinning with a few things, just being in the ministry and, um, you know, um, knowing that ministry is a calling. You know, I don't think people can stay in ministry. I don't care what part of the ministry you're in. 
it's you know it's all um, rigorous. It's all you know a, a lot. We you know we all have a target on our back, and uh, when you come out of that, you know some people times people look at you and they're like, well, you're leaving a calling, you know, and the the calling's really serving Christ. Yeah. And yeah. and where you're serving, so I would believe that calling is moving on with you, you know, yeah. and especially with somebody who also worked for a church. You know? Yeah. I mean, it's it's one of those things because a lot of people think, well, you'll do that forever. You know, and it's like, well, if I will, if God wants me to, but, mm-hmm. you know, like you said, there's some things that God was fulfilling. Well, I think you always serve God and serve you, other people. If you're that doing doesn't it, mean where you work is. But, but, you know, and this is something I'd like to get your opinion on, Brett, and what, what maybe we'll continue it over with Ministry Matters. But how, how do you feel about that? Because there again, when I tell people I'm retiring, Mike knows I'm not retiring yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're doing things together in tennessee you know what i mean and we're doing things with what we're doing i mean that's I, we've shared that before oh right? yeah uh-huh. but, but but it's you're still serving god and so it's just uh you know god's you know transferring locations and uh and anointing really would you would you agree with that brett go go into that because i know did you struggle with that i was called to ministry 17 years serving god now people think I'm like bailing and becoming a heathen and, you know, it just, it, I, I, that's the thing that yeah. I'll get sometimes and I'll remind them I'm not retiring. I am pushing the <clears throat> um, social security button because I'm 65. So it's just like, <laughs> uh, you know, I am going to do that now. But, but do, you, do yeah. you feel that same way? I mean, it's, it's interesting me because as I'm doing it, I'm within a year now, you've already done it because yeah. 17 years just isn't an experiment. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. You, you yeah. went from the guy it's, low in on the totem pole as the assistant to yeah. the video. <laughs> assistant yeah. to the video. And, well, and then yeah. he left the CIO, right? Yeah, yeah. You got to just saying too, and he told his brother-in-law, "Hey, I'm out." <laughs> <laughs> I'm a, I, yeah, I, 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 hey, I'm going to find another way with your, you know, to, to make a living for your sister and your nephews and nieces. <laughs> yeah, but everybody, yeah, thinks... it, it, yeah, it definitely is odd because <clears throat> it's like I know on one hand I know that my calling, my ministry, it it wasn't what I was doing at Gateway. Like uh, the ministry, there was so much ministry that happened to the. Uh, on the, the, to the staff, the teams yes. I led, the, yes. the young, the young men and women I poured, got to pour into and believe in, and see them rise up and like call things out of them and speak prophetically to them. And so there was a lot of, there was a lot of that was there was a lot of ministry happening, and <clears throat> and so it's it's been it's been a little bit hard to to realize like okay, so I that all can still happen, you know, there, it, but it. The thing that I, the, where it's happened for 17 years is changing. Um, and I was in a routine. I was in, I knew what every day looked like. I knew what my meeting schedules looked like. I knew I had it down. Like I, I was crushing it. Like I, I knew, I knew how to lead at that level and in that environment. But God was saying, Hey, cool. But like there's more I need you to do in a different environment. And there's other people that can carry on what you're doing now. You laid a good groundwork and there's other people that need to come behind you. Now I need you to go do something that only you can do. And it has, it took a while of a mind shift to go, but like I was so good at that or I felt like I was good at that and I was fulfilled. And I, and that's like, I thought I was just gonna do that forever, you know, like, you know, and so, um, but it's been really cool. And I think Mike, uh, you and I talked about this on one of our call and our call last call, but uh, it's been cool to see the Lord bring even people like you guys uh, other potential customers that we're talking to that are trying to do, that are doing ministry and to maybe us come alongside this of, of them now to serve them. And for now me to be the one that like Matthew was for me to go, I, let me come alongside your church or your organization or your nonprofit and help you reach more people and help you be more effective. And uh, let's get you on all these TV app platforms so people can ex- hear, you know, hear your message. And so it's been weird. It's like, yeah, I'm in the business world now, but yet I still am getting to have a kingdom impact yes. on, you know, uh, and with our staff and with our development team, 
that you know not everyone's a believer and getting to be like to the to our own teams and that's that's a whole that's a whole new thing that like when you're in the gateway the church bubble you're not you're not you're not you're not uh you know witnessing to your own staff members hopefully but now being in the business world you get to kind of have some of those conversations so well, that's that's that's, cool. that's where i want to dig on the next show <clears throat> yeah so, well you you guys have so much stuff in yeah, common tom yeah, yeah. um well well it, it's funny when you find a kindred spirit mm-hmm. and somebody who has walked that mile you know i i remember what it was like when i first heard that uh, you know, I've got plans for you beyond what you're doing. And it's like, huh? Because mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. you got that too, right? It's like, oh, yeah. That's a foreign thought. You know, that, that, that's mm-hmm. the way it was for me. So, yeah. But, yeah. Um, man, Brett, um, as, as we're kind of wrapping up this, this show, uh-huh. um, I want to ask you, you know, is there any last thoughts you'd like to leave with our audience um, or anything you want to say about Iconic or how they can reach out to you or any of those things? Yeah, I mean, um, thank you for having me on. It's I appreciate it. It's been good to get to chat with you guys and share my story. But yeah, it, I mean, if you guys, if anyone needs, you know, if you're you have if you have content, video content, and you're trying to uh, grow the audience and, um, and distribute it to all the different places where people watch content, hit us up. Um, our website is iconic.com, and that's with two Ks because there are other iconics, but I K N I K O N I K dot com. Uh, but yeah, we're here to serve if you need us. Yeah, and if that fits you guys, I know that Tom and I are going to have more further conversations with uh, Brett about the business side, but we're also going to have a further conversation with Brett on Ministry Matters. Yeah, so if you're watching this show, like us, subscribe, keep us going, and uh, we'll um, be uh, dropping this show, and we'll also have another one with Brett on Ministry Matters. Yep, thanks for watching. God bless. Awesome, thanks, thanks guys.